Okay, so I wanted to quickly give a uh, good concrete example of what it means to run a biology thought experiment. And I will do that by showing you what I did this morning um, as an example. So this morning, I wanted to solidify my concrete understanding of what the cell looked like in 3D. So I took an area of this room, so about here to about here, um, and visualized it as a cell. Um, and so when you're walking around this area, you kind of see the cell around you. And um, to anchor myself in this environment, um, I needed to understand what the length of an atom would be. Um, because meters are nonsense. You know, on the cell level, um, you're looking at a millionth of a meter, and it makes no sense at all to use a meter as a reference frame. So you should use atoms instead, or whatever else suits your fancy. And so therefore, um, if this kind of you know, area right here is about a cell, then a tenth of it would be a thousand atoms. So that basically is this. Um, this is a thousand atoms, um, and so it's kind of cool because a thousand is an approachable number, and you can kind of look at this and say, okay, this is around a thousand atoms, so this length scale, I, I, could, I couldn't really see an atom, but I can imagine about how big one would be. Um, and for further reference, um, this thing right here would be a hundred atoms. Um, and so you can kind of look at it, and yeah, I mean, you couldn't see an atom, but like you could approximately, maybe it'd be like, you know, smaller than a millimeter, but like not that much smaller. Um, and it's cool that you could have some um, feeling for about how big it would be. So, uh, therefore, uh, one of the first intuitions that uh, this kind of chain of reasoning gave me was a surprise feeling. Because if an atom is about a hundredth of this, then yes, um, you know, that's very small. There's a lot of room for atoms in this, you know, environment. But it felt off. It felt like the complexity of the cell couldn't really fit in this size room. And I realized the off feeling came from my confusion because looking around, there's a lot of empty space. And in my mind, um, I was like, wow, how can a cell get anything done? And even if it's like pretty well packed, um, you know, there's, you know, there's sort of only this much room, uh, it might not have enough room for all the components it needs. And, and then I realized, oh no, the cell is extraordinarily packed. Um, like this whole empty space intuition that we have is totally wrong. And if you actually looked in a cell, you'd see things like smooshed up right next to each other all over the place, I think. And how interesting that my intuition was off on that. And then also that led me to ask the question of, you know, how much passive versus active diffusion is there in a cell? Um, if things are that packed, uh, do you have enough room to kind of control where things go? Um, and I kind of, my brain started asking all these questions about with passive diffusion, for example, what are the constraints? Like, oh, obviously cells use passive diffusion because they couldn't use active diffusion for everything or active transport for everything because that'd be way too energy intensive. Um, but then in that case, what are the constraints that passive diffusion has put on the functionality of a cell and what things can't it do um, because it's so constrained to just that mechanism. It doesn't have energy to you know, actively transport everything everywhere and that'd be so hard to um, do even if you could. And then I thought about chips and how you know, in a computer chip you have mostly controlled transport. So electrons, you know, I guess diffuse down a gradient, but like they're, you're controlling where they go um, very deterministically. And what a chip would look like if it were designed with like passive diffusion as its mechanism at different components and how that might even work. And then therefore how cell like design has you know somehow evolved to fit that constraint. So anyhow, um, and then a bunch of other questions like you know how much information is going in and out of the cell and what's the topology all these different like you know vesicles, um, but just kind of like that all came from making this physical representation of a cell and then forcing myself to anchor to something that I, I knew about like an atom, and then trying to feel what was off about my intuitions around a cell on those length scales. Um, so yeah, biology thought experiments are really fun. Um, you should probably do more of them to enrich your life. And uh, yes, biology is cool.